For untold millennia, the galaxy bore witness to a vast and endless cycle. A nation would rise, conquer the stars within their reach, and eventually unite every world through the might of their armies or the efforts of their diplomats. Yet such triumphs were never to endure. Their glittering cities would become racked by plague, a civil war would shatter their planets, or, in their arrogance, their civilization would be overcome or subsumed by machines of their own design. Any survivors would be forced to retreat into isolationism, lone bastions from which to observe the greatest works of their fallen empire be pilfered by usurpers or simply fade into legend. Yet for the first time in recent memory, when the cycle began anew, the wonders, terrors, and mysteries of the galaxy were not left to a single nation to inherit. Whether by a simple act of fate or some cruel design, a multitude of nations took to the stars within mere years of one another, some in the pursuit of utopian ideals, others merely for profit or plunder. As this new age began, none could say whether these powers would cooperate together in an unprecedented display of harmony, or if the galaxy would descend into war until a single banner flew above the ashes of the others. For a time, the young races merely analyzed and cataloged the stars around them, ignorant of their place in the universe and the presence of one another. Across the galaxy, however, their ships slowly made contact and confirmed the suspicion that they were not alone. In no instance were these initial meetings more devastating than the first contact between the Omni Codex and the Way. A boundless machine intelligence that had long ago subdued and archived their creators, the Omni Codex was relentless in its pursuit of cataloging and preserving selections of all life in the galaxy. The humanoid Vargal were to be no exception. Their homeworld had been brought to ruin by their own violent tendencies, and it was only through the arrival of a great prophet that the desperate survivors had been saved. Now they searched for a perfect form of existence known only as the Way, a state of being that would transcend the very fabric of the universe and the namesake of their celestial empire. Between such antithetical ideologies, there could be no peace. As the struggle for resources and territory intensified, or perhaps driven by their unstable programming, the Omni Codex declared war on the followers of the Way. Other contacts were relatively peaceful, with some even resulting in declarations of non-aggression or trade. For the United Nations of the Galaxy, however, first contact brought with it uncomfortable memories from the past. The UNG was the result of humanity finally overcoming the divisions and ignorance that for so long had defined their species. Ideological struggles had been replaced with a free and open society, one built on the dream of achieving a prosperous galaxy. In a bitter irony, it was the union of supreme synthetic republics that the UNG first encountered, a nation built on the immortal concepts of socialism and the overriding belief that the flesh is weak. Star systems linking the two nations were quickly fortified, and a race to claim the advantage erupted across their border territories. The ideals of socialism had reached as far as the Jakira Patch, and here the Asphodel Anarchist Collective embarked on an aggressive campaign of expansion. Inherently opposed to any form of statism, Asphodel had granted its citizens unrestricted personal freedom, but its outer colonies were soon overrun with crime and narcotics. It was quickly determined that the anarcho-socialist model was not at fault, but rather the insidious machinations of a vast criminal enterprise. Known only as the Family, this underworld empire operating under the guise of a megacorporation had spread its illicit operations to Asphodel worlds. As more and more powers came into contact with one another, the war between the Omni Codex and the Way continued. In the strategic Kabji system, the Omni Codex seized a critical starbase and quickly fortified it against any eventual counterattack. In propaganda broadcast throughout local space, they coldly declared that there would be no way through. But conflict could not be confined merely to this corner of space. 
when the world of Wegmore, home to the comparatively primitive Zakplot civilization, was seized by the Termitadaya Collective, the response was swift. An unknowable gestalt consciousness, the Termitadaya could not be entrusted to keep the Zakplot free from domination, and the Sozialistische Räte Republik was forced to intervene. Pledging to liberate the oppressed workers of the galaxy, their fleet of warships entered the star system and quickly destroyed the local Termitadai garrison. A Termitadai counterattack was again beaten back, albeit with heavy losses, and each side agreed to end hostilities. The Zak plot had been saved, and was soon clandestinely indoctrinated with socialist propaganda. The UNG likewise found itself the target of those who would see the workers of all worlds unite. After decades of tensions, the Sozialistische Räte Republik launched an attack into the UNG's border systems, annexing several and pressing their advantage to force humanity to come to terms. The defeat was a blow to the UNG's morale, but proved to be a catalyst for the galaxy's first major alliance. Eventually, Platycorp, a corporate authority obsessed with the need for self-improvement and perfection, the Cupidor Technocracy, a science directorate which aimed to achieve immortality through cybernetics, and the Obadan Republic, a machine intelligence formed from an autonomous service grid, joined together to serve as a bulwark against the hostile forces of the galaxy. Their victories over the way had emboldened the Omni Codex, and in its continued bid to catalog all life, declared war on Reflex Inc. A mega corporation built on exploitation and tyranny, Reflex Inc. was helpless as one of its worlds was conquered and its population sent back to the Omni Codex homeworld for dissection and cataloging. True to their nature, the Omni Codex relinquished control over the planet once their gruesome task had been completed. Elsewhere in the galaxy, in a rare victory for diplomacy, albeit diplomacy conducted at gunpoint, Platycorp accepted the demands made by the Sozialistische Räte Republik, adopting a type of social welfare for all its citizens. As if to emphasize their continued successes, or perhaps boast of the inherent superiority of the socialist system which they had for so long claimed, the Sozialistische Räte Republik announced the establishment of a galactic marketplace, becoming the unofficial center of the galactic economy. This achievement motivated the other socialist nations of the galaxy, the Union of Supreme Synthetic Republics, the Asphodel Anarchist Collective, and the Cooperative Commune of Crustacean Planets, whose homeworld had long suffered under the rule of capitalism before their own glorious revolution, to form the Fifth Interstellar. In a single stroke, the alliance founded by the UNG had been overtaken as the most powerful combined force in the galaxy. The formation of two competing power blocks was not enough to stem the tide of conflict, however. The Way continued to escape the grip of the Omni Codex, only to have their homeworld occupied. Forbidden from accepting peace by the doctrines of their faith, the Way continued their possibly futile struggle. Sensing weakness, the Batizu Empire, a bandit kingdom of slavers, seized the opportunity to attack the Way's remaining colonies, abducting their populace before retreating behind the safety of their borders. The Aeternum, a hive mind that had so far lingered beyond the periphery of known space, also took advantage of the situation. Its ships launched a daring attack in the outermost systems of the Omni Codex, aiming to cut off its line of advance before the Aeternum's drones could be added to the Codex's collection. Even the newly founded Fifth Interstellar was not above the threat of war. The Holy Valton Kingdom, led by religious fanatics who viewed the galaxy as theirs and theirs alone, declared war on the Asphodel Anarchist Collective. Their initial raids achieved little, and after a fierce counterattack by the Asphodel destroyed much of the Holy Valton's fleet, the conflict stagnated, with neither side able to breach the defenses of the other. Only after a hidden military buildup of warships specifically designed to nullify the weaponry of their opponent was the Asphodel Anarchist Collective able to decisively beat the Holy Valton Kingdom in open battle, and force a white peace, one in which both sides declared victory. In an attempt to compete with the Fifth Interstellar and enforce their will upon the galaxy, 
the UNG's own alliance, after much deliberation, declared war upon the Dredge. An enormous colony of drones united under the will of their Hive Queen, the Dredge had long been a threatening presence in their region of the galaxy, even going so far as to destroy an alien derelict known as the Infinity Machine before the scientists of Platycorp could fully unlock its secrets. As such conflicts captured the attention of the galactic community, other nations were content to remain within their borders, or enact their plans through less obvious means. The uppermost leadership of the family was rumored to have spent much of their time aboard the opulent casino starbase run by the migrant caravaneers, reportedly boasting, the family rolls the dice, the universe answers every time. Their winnings were used to spread their network of crime and piracy across the galaxy, and their targets struggled to find a way to contain their hidden influence. In a battle fought through engineering, the Tocardian Utopia, an isolationist power that longed for nothing more than calm and peaceful inward perfection, defeated the Union of Supreme Synthetic Republics in the race to construct the first large-scale artificial habitat. It was in a remote and largely forgotten region of the galaxy that the strangest incident occurred. In the earliest days of the New Age, as the other nations of the galaxy encountered one another amongst the stars, the cyber Collective, former livestock that had broken their shackles and now worked towards the mastery of technology, made contact with something vastly different. After several of their greatest scientists were lost within the Geltari black hole, the Collective was approached by a being of unfathomable intelligence known only as the Worm. Through the light of the Worm and the ominous mantra that what was shall be, the Cyber Kaunetic Collective was reborn, every citizen utterly and mysteriously transformed. The new age of opportunity and danger that unfolded across the galaxy challenged every nation within it. Mighty alliances have formed, but whether they will remain united in the face of adversity or merely pacts of convenience has yet to be tested. Conflicting ideologies have created battlefields out of star systems perhaps the first step to victory or future graveyards of empires. Powers vying for the mantle of leadership have made their names known across the galaxy. But do they have the will to move the wheel of history? Or are they merely targets for those who have yet to step out from the shadows? Thanks to Paradox Interactive for allowing us at the Templin Institute to investigate and document the many empires in their intense and unpredictable DevClash series. We'll be providing a summary of the events of their streams every few weeks, but if you'd like to watch the DevClash live streams as they happen, or stay up to date with the latest news on Stellaris and its upcoming Megacorp expansion, follow them on Twitch and YouTube. There's a link in the description.